Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be showing you how to customize your center console with suede and crushed velvet. If your center console looks anything like mine, it is in definite need of some help. Mine is scratched, faded, and overall looks really crappy and outdated. To be honest, it was kind of an eyesore in my car. That being said, let's give it a refresh. The first step is the disassembly process. I decided to start with the armrest lid by removing these screws on the hinge to separate the lid from the main body. Once that's been separated, there's a ton of screws underneath, so make sure you get all those guys out and also remove your hinge. If your hinge looks anything like mine, um, that's gonna need some attention too. A little cleaning, sanding, and some fresh paint should do the trick there. The next thing to address is the cigarette lighter and the side mirror switch. That pushes out from the underside, so flip your center console over. On the side mirror switch, there is a little clip on one side of that switch that you must compress. Once you push that in, the switch itself should push out of the center console. For the cigarette lighter, you must line up a groove in the notch by rotating it around. Once it's lined up, that pops right out. I realize I'm missing a piece where that connector and those two screws are at, so I'm gonna have to find that piece or else it's gonna bother me. But anyways, remove the four screws that hold on that e-brake trim here from the underside. Once that's off, the e-brake trim itself will also remove from the underside by pushing it down. It's pretty easy to get that thing off. This is where the small rear ashtray is at. As you can see here, I've already removed it. There is a little bracket that is assembled to the center console by a couple of screws. So you will need to take that off in order to take that bracket out. The bracket is not any better shape than that hinge. So that's also gonna need a good cleaning, sanding, as well as some paint. Here's a little pro tip that I learned over the years is to utilize a Ziploc bag for all of your small components and screws, especially when you're taking things apart. This will help you stay organized and so you don't lose anything. Here are all the supplies that I'll be using in this process. Um, I'll also have a list of these supplies listed in the description. The only thing that is not shown right here is the actual material that I'll be using, in which case is going to be black suede and red crush velvet. I will be using two different grits of sandpaper. I'll be using 100 grit to sand the main body of the center console, and I'll be using 400 grit sandpaper in order to sand down the hinges that were rusted out before I repaint those. These clips and clamps are a good idea to have too. It's better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. This is what your center console should look like once it has been cleaned, sanded, and cleaned again. You want to sand the entire outer area as well as the perimeter of the underside of this part. And you want to repeat the same steps for your ashtray, for your center trim piece, for your armrest lid, for every single piece that's going to get some material applied to it. You want to make sure it's been clean, sanded, and cleaned again properly. Now we are ready to start applying some adhesive. The good side of my black suede is facing against my work surface, and I'm applying several light coats of this adhesive to the material, as well as applying several light coats of this adhesive to the main body of the center console. I'm only applying it onto the main body and I'm not really focusing where the e-brake, the shifter, the cigarette lighter, and the side mirror is at because that is ultimately going to be a different color. So I'm not really putting adhesive there, just on everything else. This is what it should look like. As you can see, there is some webbing that's kind of attaching that center console to that work surface. So use your X-Acto knife and run it along that edge in order to separate it from that paper. If you don't separate it from the paper, as soon as you try to lift up your center console, that paper is also going to want to come up with your center console. Before we start wrapping the center console with material, you want to pick a point of reference. I'm using the bottom edge of my center console and the bottom edge of the material here. I'm going to put the center console above the material as a kind of a dry run, just to double check and make sure that I have enough material. As I apply the center console onto the fabric, I am leaving about an inch of material on the bottom side. That way, I have some material to roll over the edge later on. You want to roll this material all the way around the center console. You have 60 minutes of working time, so if you do encounter any wrinkles, you have some time to pull that material back out and address those wrinkle spots. Once you have all of your material laid out properly and all of your hard lines have been defined, you're ready to move on to the rear of the center console. The rear of the center console has a lot of material coming together in one spot. We have the material from the sides and the top all bunching together on this back area. 
I found it a little bit easier to grab your X-Acto knife and to make a relief cut where your armrest area is at. That way you can work with the material without having to stretch it so much. Since we are using one piece of material to cover this center console and there's so much excess material on the back side here, this will require a seam. There's a seam on the top and the bottom. I chose to do mine right in the center. You can see it in this video, but you can't really see it in person. This portion on the top of my center console is uh, gonna be a different color. This is where the e-brake handle, the shifter, the cigarette lighter, side mirror switch, where all that good stuff is at. For purpose of this video, I'm just gonna to refer to that as the insert area. So my insert area is gonna be a different color. So I have the black suede that's currently sitting there since we wrapped the entire thing with that one piece of fabric. I'm gonna use the X-Acto knife and cut along that defined line very carefully, uh, making sure that I don't go into like the main body of my center console. As I was doing this, I noticed one part of my material that was not sticking properly. Um, if you face this situation, I suggest using something small like a toothpick and applying adhesive to the end of that toothpick and using that toothpick to apply the adhesive underneath that flap that's lifting up. That way you can apply just a small little amount of adhesive where you need it to be and you don't have to lift up all of that material over again. Before you can start rolling your material back onto the the back side of your panel here, you want to remove this excess material. You only really need about a half inch to an inch or so of material left. So you want to trim that out all the way around. Um, once you trim it out, put some blue tape and on top of that blue tape, apply some masking paper. You're essentially creating like a little room. Our main goal here is to make sure that we don't get any excess glue onto the good side of the material. So that's why we have the tape and the paper here to kind of create a little barrier. Um, if you do get adhesive on the good side of the material, it does not come off. Um, you will see it. I mean, you may be able to get most of it off, but you'll still see some of it there. So uh, take the extra time and make sure that you guys mask off the area properly. Just as we did with the other pieces, you want to apply several light coats of this adhesive. Um, since we're working on the portion of rolling this over to the back side, you want to apply adhesive not only to the material, but you want some adhesive on the plastic parts as well. This ashtray portion, you want to get all the way around the ashtray. So you want adhesive on the sides, the top and the bottom of the ashtray area. Don't forget your corners and your edges. All this material is going to get wrapped behind. So you want to make sure you have some good coverage of that adhesive. Once all of your adhesive is laid out, you're ready to remove all of your blue tape and your masking paper. Once that has been removed, you're ready to start rolling your material onto the back side. As you're rolling this material onto the back side, you want to make sure you press it firmly against the center console. I'm starting at one end and working my way around the entire center console until I reach the other end. Once all of your material has been rolled over to the back side of your center console, it should look something like this. If you notice the back ashtray area, the material is rolled over all four of those sides. Once you have hit this point, the main body of your center console is pretty much done with black suede. Now we are ready to move on to the other components, such as the ashtray and the armrest. So you want to follow the same steps as what we did previously with the other parts. You want to make sure this stuff is really clean. You want to sand everything as well as the back edges, and you want to clean it one more time then make sure you measure everything out properly. It's pretty straightforward. Just follow the same exact steps as we did for that main center console. For this ashtray piece, I will be using some clamps on this back side just to hold it in place since we have a lot of this material rolling over the edges and kind of coming together. So this is where those clamps will definitely come in handy. This is what the completed armrest should look like. Uh, the same with the ashtray on these corner portions here is where material is going to kind of bunch up together. So just as we did with the ashtray, we're going to apply some clips to those corner areas just to make sure that the material seats down properly. If you can see here, as we're making these turns and that material kind of comes together, that's what I'm referring to as the material bunching up. There is adhesive underneath that material and there is adhesive onto the armrest itself on the underside. So as long as we put some sort of clamping force and push those two pieces together, they should adhere properly and they won't move. Um, I do let this sit overnight just until I feel confident that it's not going anywhere. All of the black suede pieces have been completed now. 
So we got the lid and we got the main body of the center console as well as that rear ashtray. So now it's time to focus on this insert area that we are going to be applying the red crush velvet to. So it'll be a nice contrast in color and it'll match with all the rest of my interior pieces that I've done. Since there are three main pieces to this uh, center insert area and they are all oriented in a certain direction, I recommend placing all of those parts onto the same piece of material that you'll be cutting out of and also keeping track of which way your parts are oriented on this piece of material and maintain that until you apply adhesive and get that material onto your actual part. That way, when you install all of those three pieces onto your car, the grain of that crushed velvet is all going the same direction and it looks really nice. If you lose track of which way your parts are facing on that material, you risk the possibility of having one of your components going the wrong grain and it'll kind of stand out and not look that great. The same exact steps that we did for all the portions with black suede applies to this red crushed velvet. Um, you want to make sure all of your lines are defined on this insert area of the center console. We do have the shift boot area, the e-brake area, the cigarette lighter, the side mirror switch. So you will have to make a bunch of relief cuts in order to fold this material back onto the back side. As I mentioned earlier, you don't need a ton of material. All you need is about a half inch to an inch of material from those relief cuts. And that's plenty to roll around to the back edge there. In addition to making the cuts for all of those openings, you want to cut along that defined line and remove all of your excess material. Once your excess material has been removed, you're ready to take off your masking paper and your blue tape. This is a pretty exciting step because now you can finally see what that contrast is going to look like with that red on top of the black for your center console. This is by no means finished at this point, but this just kind of shows you and gives you an idea of what our final product is going to look like. All right, so making good progress with the center console, the next thing that is left to do is the remaining two pieces that we're gonna be wrapping red. This is gonna be in the center of the center console, right? So that was the insert area that we just completed. The small ashtray that goes there will also be red, as well as this trim piece that we're doing right here. This trim piece has the shift boot, it has the radio and the little DIN holder as well as the climate control. All that stuff goes into this uh, trim portion right here. All of the previous steps still apply here. This trim piece was cleaned thoroughly, sanded with 100 grit sandpaper, as well as being cleaned again before we ever applied any adhesive onto this trim piece. Since there are three different openings on this trim piece, you want to sand around the perimeter of each one of those openings on that back side. Reason being is we're eventually going to make some relief cuts in order to gain access to those openings again, right? We don't want those things closed off. So we're going to be making our relief cuts in order to roll that material back to the back side. This is what it looks like with all of the material applied to the front side. If you notice, some of the pieces are rather thin. So it does not require as much excess material as we used for the center console. This is what it looks like when the main perimeter of this trim area has been wrapped over. You notice that there's some spots that is not that much material. We don't need that much material here. We will need to cut out these openings with the X-Acto knife. So make sure you have a good fresh blade on there and you wanna cut each one of those openings out, just leaving about a half inch material um, excess, uh, maybe less. Gauge it by feel, see how much material it is, and determine how much you need. As you can see here, it's really not that much. Maybe half an inch, a quarter of an inch. Um, call it what you want. You just need enough to roll over to that back edge. Same exact thing is going to get applied to this ashtray. We have our material oriented in the same direction as our other pieces. That way, when everything is assembled, it all flows in the same direction and it looks good. We are on the home stretch for having our center console completed. Um, I saved the ashtray for the last. I wanted to finish off with something easy and tackle the harder pieces to begin with. The Red Crush Velvet is very easy to work with. The ashtray is very small. So I wanted to finish off with this piece 
Uh, that way it can go fairly quickly and I can get everything assembled back together. Due to the shape of the lid of this ashtray, there will be some material that's rolling over to the back side and kind of bunching on the corners. Um, this material stretches pretty easily, so it wasn't too bad. But if you need to use some clips on the corners, go ahead and use those clips just to make sure that that material sticks properly to the lid of this ashtray here. Grab your Ziploc bag of all the little pieces and screws that we put away earlier. Now we are ready to start the assembly process. These are all of the parts that we have completed, laid out on my work surface here. So that is the center trim, the lid, the main body of the center console, both ashtrays, the one for the rear and the one for the top, as well as all the little screws and little pieces. Um, the hinge was in pretty rough shape, so this guy has been sanded down with 400 grit sandpaper and repainted with matte black paint. The same with the bracket for the rear ashtray. The assembly process is pretty straightforward. We'll just be doing everything in reverse order that we have taken it off. I am here starting with the lid. The only thing that's going to be a little unique with putting this all back together is since our center console is now covered with material, there was the hinge that attached the lid to the center console. We will need to cut a couple of slits in the top part of that material in order to allow the screws to go through that material into those holes. The slits to make in the material um, do not have to be that long at all. Literally just about like an eighth of an inch. All that we're sliding through there is just the screws. So they don't need to be big cuts at all. So make these cuts very carefully. Once you have those slits in place, the screw should be able to go through the hinge and into the screw holes on the other side of that material. The underside of your lid should look like that and it should function properly just as it did before we started. Installing the side mirror switch and the cigarette lighter is very easy. They literally just pop right into the holes there. Make sure that the words and the writing is facing you as if you were sitting in the car and don't install these upside down. Um, you can't really mess this up. I mean, I suppose you can. It's a circle and a square, so you can put them in upside down. But as you're sitting in the car, you should be able to read what is on those switches. That's how you know that those are oriented correctly. The e-brake trim is also very straightforward and simple. You do have to install it from the bottom side. Once it's installed, just reapply those four Phillips screws and that'll be secured in place. All we have to do is install the rear ashtray and bracket that holds it in place. That bracket was in rough shape, was pretty rusted, so that guy was also sanded with some 400 grit sandpaper and sprayed with matte black paint. Uh, came out really good, really impressed with how, the, how that's looking right now. So the first thing is to install the bracket right there, and then the ashtray just pops right in. This is what it looks like the whole rear section when it's put together. Again, you can't even really notice those seams that we had. It came out really, really good. The next thing to do is to install the main ashtray into the center console and install that trim piece. There are some screws and some little brackets on the back side of that trim piece that I noticed were a little bit loose. So this is a really good opportunity to just grab a screwdriver and tighten those up before you install it. When we install this into the car, this trim piece won't be going in at the same time because there's screws underneath here. But I'm just going to pop it on. That way you can get an idea of what it looks like to have uh, the center console completed. What do you guys think? Let me know if you have any questions. Other than that, the center console is complete. Please like and subscribe to see more. Thanks guys. See you next time. you